What's this? Moon pie. Banana moon pie. <laughs> what? Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Path magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and uh, how was your week this week? Mine was still busy, <laughs> still busy every week. Uh, this weekend though, it's Friday night and I am sitting outside in the cold to deal with the Daytonas again. So we're coming back to revisit this. So if you remember in the last Daytona video, uh, we pointed out a few problems with this, this machine, especially this one on the, the left here, which we're gonna fix up. That right one is gonna need a little bit more work. Uh, but we had a problem with the sound board and we also had a screen collapse while we were watching <laughs> while I was actually trying to show you that it was all working in the last video. So um, what are we going to do today? Well, I have a couple of things that have arrived that hopefully will fix some of these problems because uh, we also had the force feedback motor it wasn't working uh, on the machine as well. So we're getting an error on the BD drive board. So what have I got? Well, first of all, I have the uh, monitor chassis fixed. In fact, I got both of them repaired by Joe Mac. Thanks, Joey. And uh, yeah, these aren't in the best of shape, to be honest. Um, certainly look like uh, they got a little bit of the, the weather with these machines about being out, outside for so long. But he has repaired them and apparently the chassis does work, so it may not look the greatest, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a working chassis. So. I'm um, hoping to put this back in and uh, we should get a nice picture and of course it is in the evening this time guys so we won't have the reflection of the sun so I'm hoping that this will work and you'll be able to see uh, the glorious screen kick into life. All things are going well of course. Um, so yeah this is a, uh, a Nano uh, MS8 26A chassis and uh, definitely definitely the original one that was in the machine i think so that's the first thing we're going to put in and then we'll just make sure that we've got a picture back the next thing is the sound now in this box apparently there are three working sound boards and if you recall from last time i did mention that even though the um, daytona is a model 2 system game it connects through to a model 1 sound board um, and because they're quite popular across all the Model 1 and, and I'm not sure how many other Model 2 games use it to be honest but because they're quite popular um, they're reasonably or well, they're easier to find than say the whole Daytona stack that's for sure so I managed to pick up three off eBay which are apparently in this box and apparently they're working <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if we can believe that or not um, you, I mean look, normally they say it's untested or definitely not working if it's not this, these ones definitely said they've been tested working so we shall see hopefully at least we can get one of them going would be great um, but this may not fix our problem guys because uh, remember there's three keyboards in the Daytona that looks after the sound we have this main soundboard um, which is definitely not working I know that this actual board in there is not working because it's got the red and green lights are locked on hard and of course the cap <laughs> one of the caps fell off the board when I brushed it clean last time so surprising it even uh, has the lights on the LEDs but anyway so that's definitely not working but that flows through into the mixer mixer board um, and there could be something wrong with that still I have a spare one of those from the other side which I could swap in if I get troubles and after that is the amplifier and again I've got another amplifier in the other machine too so just in case we might need to swap that over I did detect that um, it I believe it's getting a bit of a sort of a pop through the speakers and that may indicate that the amplification is actually okay. I'm hoping that's the case and really all that's required is for us to get this soundboard in and that hopefully will allow the sounds to go through and we shall see if that works or not. So the first thing is, is let's open this up um, because I have no idea what actually the state of this is inside. And actually, guys, it seems so light. I'm not even sure if there's three boards in here. <laughs> really light. but they're pretty small so anyway let's open this up <laughs> this, is, 
this is other boards in here because at the moment um, I've got oh yeah there is a board in here what's this moon pie banana moon pie <laughs> what what is moon pie it's edible apparently what's it doing in this box oh well some moon pie okay cool well there's definitely here's a board here um, get it out okay and I'll tell you what hopefully there's more boards in there because this seems very very light on um right so this looks actually pretty decent you can see that uh, it looks like there's really no corrosion on there um looks pretty nice of course you can never you never really know until you plug them in of course but that's promising however i should have three <laughs> and i'm not seeing any others so hang on put this down this seems really, really light, guys. Surely. Did I just get the moon pie? Wow, it looks like it. Yeah. How about that? Okay. So, <laughs> only one board out of the three. Uh-huh. What has happened there? Okay, well that uh, shortens our chances a little bit obviously I will have to follow up with the eBay seller or why he's only sent he or she has sent only one board oh well <laughs> uh, we've got one shot at it I guess um, let's hope that guy guy works so I think the first thing to do is let's get the chassis in and let's see if we can get the uh, the monitor back and going let's do that now all right so we need to get this reconnected so I've just put the board in the back here and uh, the first set we need to connect is just on the front put that on there then we have the yoke wires and can okay, I check which way they were so we had brown and yellow and we're on this back one here it's on there like that and you can see uh, these are normally joined together in a set of four but um, just the way the orientation is of the monitor these two would have had to have been cut to either reverse the screen or flip it um, so that's why they're cut otherwise this would normally be a bank of four joined together so I'll just check the color coding on which one is correct on the next one okay and it's blue and then red on this setup so we'll get that in there A blue then red on the end that on there like that now we have around the back we've got the power so just hidden over the back here got this little plug just there uh, it's keyed so I'll just pop this on and be back with you in a second because it's a little bit tight here okay the, the AC is now connected the next thing we need to do is we need to connect this neck board back up to here um, and as we do that I'm also going to have to connect a little uh, ground wire which you can see from here this guy and that actually goes onto the back of the neck board and I'm going to connect that little earth to that pin right there so again I can't really do this uh, holding the camera so I'm just going to connect the black to that little pin and then effectively this is uh, keyed on the back here and that will slot up onto there and I'll just wiggle that on and that'll be the back of the neck I'll just do that now all right so there's the neck firmly on the back here it's all done so the last thing is is to connect the anode cup uh, onto the tube itself now I have gone and discharged this again guys even though it hasn't been plugged in just a m matter of habit so just make sure that uh, it is discharged regardless 
best to be safe than sorry. I need to get those two little clips into the hole and then they'll lock in. And the anode cap is now on, so uh, well, let's uh, fire this thing up. Now the picture will probably more than likely need adjusting. Um, so let's just see what, uh, what we get. Dear, their pictures upside down. Hmm. So even though I put the, uh, <laughs> I put those things back in the same order, um, I've obviously need to swap over the yoke wires, get it the right way up. And I'm not sure what's going on here. That doesn't look uh, particularly good on the uh, the side and the colors are a little bit odd too we uh look like we're missing something because we've got like two greens here so some colors not properly working by the looks of it not sure but anyway it's the wrong way up and looks like it's too bright as well so let me swap the acre wires around and uh <laughs> let's get this guy the right way up right so <laughs> guys it's uh, upside down and back to front so clearly it wasn't the red and the blue I needed to swap around it was the brown and the yellow I need to swap around <laughs> now I have to swap them both both around because now we're back to front and upside down so I just made it worse <laughs> okay and also uh, I'll, I'll swap those in a, in a second but also I can see that the coloring now it looks like there's too much green there's too much green bias and so I am getting all the colors Certainly showing all the colours there, um, nice white, but there's definitely too much green on the uh, on the main screen. Yeah, so I'll turn that green bias down, turn the brightness down a little bit, and see if I can uh, get this picture looking good. Right, guys. So I've uh, <laughs> swapped those back around again. So now we. Um, we have yellow, brown, blue and red and that should be the right order this time and I've also adjusted that green pot down it was actually pushed around to the right it wasn't actually centered up into the middle um, so that might have just been moved when I was uh, getting it home and I've just brought the brightness down which is that next one knob along from there so let's turn it on and hopefully uh, it looks better third time lucky and this time <laughs> I can't believe it. It's back to front, guys. <laughs> right, well, I... <laughs> wow. Okay. So I still have to swap back <laughs> the blue and the red. How did I get that wrong? Uh, anyway, the colours are a lot better. Um, still maybe... Still not quite right. Still might be a tad too much green still maybe bring the brightness up a little let me check but anyway <laughs> back to the oak wires right so finally we have a uh, relatively decent picture i do need to um i need to get into that what i think they call it the ferrous core to get the screen a little bit wider um but that's okay it needs degaussing as well but i'm um, Probably going to move this around after i'm not sure yeah the picture's okay i um i must admit i sort of thought maybe it looked even a bit better before it got capped and fixed uh, in terms of colors but maybe i just haven't really got the adjustments right you sort of got to get it dead on or if there's just a little bit too much blue or a little bit too much green everything starts looking funny likewise with red but anyway we have a working monitor so guys i think what we'll do now move on to the soundboard so we're looking here we can see that the existing soundboard in the back there is uh, currently locked on with green uh, green and red uh, lights you can see there so um, that's definitely not a working unit 
So let's swap in the new one and see what happens. I'll show you the connectors guys I'm going to remove and then I'll just go ahead and do it. So I've got this guy here, I've got this guy here, this one sort of um, uh, clicks out, outwards, and then on this side we've got the A and B on those two boards. There is no, um, there's no RCAs going in here. These are the, it looks like these are the outputs that actually go to the mixer board. And then the mixer is where it has the RCAs that then go off to the speakers. Uh, and that is all. Yep, just those two, that one, and that one. So I'll just swap those over now with the, uh, the new board, which is sitting here. And we'll see what happens. Right, so we have the board in and had a little bit of a problem with this connector here because the, uh, the actual pins were a bit splayed but anyway got that on must have been uh, removed a little bit forcibly and the other one's on there and I think I had this the wrong way around this has actually got a T on it so it wasn't an A and a B and I think I had the B on the top before clearly T must be top so I put T on the top B on the bottom it's probably just reversing the front and rear speakers anyway so it shouldn't be any major problem if I've got that wrong and uh, guys now the moment of truth let's see what happens when I turn this on will we get any sound uh, let's find out hmm that's not good uh -huh, turn that off What's happened? I actually got no lights. Hmm. Right, so I need to see what I've done wrong here, guys, because I've just unplugged the sound, those two cables. That's the main power. I'm just wondering if the power wasn't in right, something was pulling or shorting. Not good. Or with the power in, maybe that soundboard is just shorting out everything. I'm not sure, but uh, basically with that unplugged, we have uh, everything has come up live again. So. Let me try re-plugging these connectors in. Maybe I didn't have them in quite correctly. And um, let's see what happens. Well, that wasn't very successful, was it? <laughs> so it's definitely um, shorting to ground. So what happens is as soon as the, the power is coming in through here, and you can see these clips are actually broken on here, but I just don't see how that would really impact it, although I'm not sure why they're on there. It's not obvious is the old board it's not obvious what they do. I mean, they sort of it punches in, and then when you push it in, it actually releases. And it sort of clips out. Um, I can't see the rationale for that um, in terms of, you know, it's not, it's not obvious in terms of how it is holding it in or pushing it in. But regardless, as soon as I apply power into here, even though these are broken, they still sort of still do move. Um, it basically, I, I lose the light on the power supply itself and no, there's no lights going through to, to anywhere. Um, so there's definitely something here on the, on the new board, which is uh, basically sort of, well, it can't be completely shorting to ground, I guess, because um, otherwise we'd be blowing fuses probably. Uh, but it certainly doesn't like it once that power is uh, connected. And unfortunately, because I wasn't given the three quote quote working built boards, <laughs> uh, I can't test the other ones because I don't know where they are. So not a good start on the sound front, guys. Um, the only positive, of course, is uh, good old Joe Mac and his solid work has come through, of course. And we have a working, uh, very nice working chassis. So uh, thanks again to, uh, to J-Mac. 
Um, we can still go ahead and uh, look at diagnosing the, um, the force feedback. You can see actually at the moment we don't have the error. We're sitting on 80, so if I move the steering wheel, you can see it's going through its rotation. So uh, that's positive, although obviously having some sort of intermittent fault where I was getting the error on that uh, driver board before. But even still, um, I'm not actually getting force feedback uh, when I actually start a game. So we still have a problem there. Uh, but we can go through, at least we can go through the test menus now. And uh, we can do all those checks. We'll open up in here. And you'll see at the back, we've got a service and test switch. And this is obviously for the two units. So this single box obviously joins up to the other unit on the right. So we've got a left and right uh, volume and uh, test and service switch. So uh, let's get into the test mode on the left one. And we're greeted with the following. Have a look at the, show you a little memory test. Let's start on that. And uh, turn off this big light over here. And funnily enough, when I first did this memory test and it scrambled up on the screen like this, I thought there was something wrong. But um, this apparently is what it should do. <laughs> and it comes back. And we can see that it's all checked out good. Uh, so that's again positive, at least for the main board. We don't seem to be having any issues touch wood. Now, if I flick through to uh, the drive BD test, so that's the one we're interested in with the wheel. Now, I must admit, I'm a little bit confused with this. I did actually check the manual. Um, the dip switches relate to the firmness of the force feedback or the strength of the force feedback, effectively. Now, they are all off at the moment. I might need to check the manual. I don't think like having them all off means that force feedback's right off, but I was pretty sure that you sort of turn these up and the more of them you have on, um, well, there's a combination there that increases the strength. But this I don't really understand. I mean, it's all on the left here. Um, it's not, it doesn't explain it much in the manual. Um, this is the clutch. Now if, I, if I move the See the wheel at the moment, it's not centering in this mode. It just stays still. And I can actually feel that's pretty firm. Um, now I'm not sure is that because I'm on that uh, clutch mode there. If I go to the next one, hang on. Cent centering. Now what happens? No, still stays where it is. So it's strange because when you start the game, of course, it, it centers back normally. So it's almost like the clutch is holding while in this test mode. Um, maybe I'm just not getting the rumble pack and of course I'm clearly talking about something I don't know how it works <laughs> so um, maybe if I go back up to the clutch and can I adjust it with the start yep so this will pull it up higher what happens if we go right up here what does this do I'm going to change this okay so it's actually definitely more firm that's much more firmer but that's all it's really doing. So that seems to be at least strength on there, on the clutch side of things. That's outside of the force feedback, uh, which is on the, um, the dip switches. So bringing that back, using the blue button, bring that back. And yeah, now it's sort of loose again. There go to the centering. And uh, try the, that all the way over. Oh, I've got a sticky button here. And it doesn't change this at all. So yeah guys, I'm going to have to sort of investigate this a little bit more. And see what is going on. The handle volume here, uh, which is the steering wheel, volume FF, well that's two, what, 255. 
that's like the top, top um, or two, uh, hang on, hex, is that 255? I think so, 256. That would tend to suggest, is that full strength handle, what you know, the, the force feedback. Yeah, guys, I'm, I need to check this out. I'm obviously guessing, um, so I need to do that. I need to put this back how it was, and I need to go do some research to find out more about that. There was another setting somewhere here which actually showed me the, um, uh, no, oh yeah, there it is, 82, 82 H, and it's moving as I move the wheel, and you can see now the wheel moves back. So it was definitely, definitely doing something there, um, and it should be around 80, Sort of not getting to 80, mind you. So maybe that pot is out. I need to look at adjusting that. This should be around 80. How far away is it from that? It's, it's a couple of digits or one digit. I, I know that allows a bit of a threshold. So, mm, not sure. All right, well, I need to check it. Now, my battery is running out, guys, so what I'll do is um, I'm going to need to charge the camera up anyway, so I think I might kind of come back and relook at this, and, of course, I have to go and send some emails to the eBay guy about the soundboard situation and uh, see where I get with that. So I'll be back. And, guys, I am back. And with the magic of YouTube, it's actually been a few weeks. It's the uh, I last signed off on the Daytona, and as you can see, it looks like it's in a different place. And it's got the seat back on. Does this mean it's all working? Well, we'll have to uh, start it up to see, and then I need to fill you in with a bit of details of what's happened here. And here we go. We have sound, finally. And if I uh, turn it up, there we go. <laughs> oh, so good to hear Daytona. Now, uh, the, uh, the sub is working. I think there is um, settings to change there. But we have sound, guys. We have sound. <laughs> so, <laughs> what has happened? What has happened? It's all working. I'm going to have a game in a minute. But first of all, I need to fill you in because it's been obviously a few weeks. How, how the hell did I get this game inside the house? And not only inside the house, but inside the house and not in the theatre. So uh, you can see the other little fake Sega Blast came out here. Remember we uh, had to get this guy out here because of the outrun. We ran out of room for that and my lovely wife said she was okay with that coming out here. So uh, out by the pool table and I thought, well, cool. So that was a bonus. I got that space straight away. <laughs> and then uh, let me tell you how I got uh, Daytona in here. But guys, it's not going to last. I, uh, I'm not going to be able to keep it in here. <laughs> but anyway, let me set this up on the tripod. I'll give you the back story. Righto. So let me give you the story of what has happened here because yes guys it has actually been um, quite a few weeks in fact when I started this video I noticed that I was wearing a jumper and I was outside and it was freezing cold since then it's got really really hot so I'm actually sort of thinking it could have been more than oh it could have been four, well it could have been about four weeks ago when I actually shot that video guys but again as you know from my other videos I have been so busy and trying to get things done um, but I thought tonight, I'm going to finally finish this one off, let you guys know where the Daytona is at, because I have to do that. Um, because when I do the update of the theatre tour, I want to cover all the machines and where they are now. Well, of course, this one has moved. So how the hell did I get this into the house? <laughs> That's a, whew, get a big game like this inside the main house when I've got the whole front room covered in, uh, well, covered with games. Um, it wasn't easy but the thing the thing that happened was that there was a storm so there was a storm four or five weeks ago 
and there was blowing a gale and there was going to, you know, I knew there would be heaps and heaps of rain and I said to my wife, and legitimately, I was concerned, I need to get this machine in, I need to get it in outside the elements, even though it was covered, you know, just that amount of wind, like, could blow the cover off, and at that stage I'd actually got the, the soundboard sorted out, which I'll talk about in a moment. So I was actually really concerned. I was genuinely concerned. So um, the funny thing is, actually, with this story, now that I think about it, guys, is I actually that was the, the case. That was without a doubt. That was genuinely the situation. The thing is, though, is that she wasn't home at the time when I made this decision about it. And so what I did is I moved it in with that story in mind to tell her when she got home. So uh, yeah, that wasn't such a great idea. Uh, her coming into the house and just seeing it there without me having the chance to explain it first. But anyway, she was actually very, very gracious and let me explain it and um, was a bit dubious about it. But she uh, she was sort of accepted that it could stay here temporarily. So when I uh, when I went to bring it inside, the, the other classic was uh, I wheeled it to the sliding door. And funnily enough, guys, I sort of thought to myself, why the hell haven't I been getting these games in through this sliding door here and just bringing the games through the front of the house? I've been always trying to bring the games through the front of the house and it's up two awkward steps. It's a bloody pole behind me there and, and it's on an angle and it's always a challenge, whereas here it's just straight through the door. However, this door is slightly, slightly smaller. I thought it was thinner than it was, but it wasn't enough to get the Daytona through. So um, I actually had to take the door off. <laughs> But it's a sliding door, so it's a lot easier. You just sort of flick it up and then pull it out. A lot easier than taking the bloody front door off, which is what I did last time to get the Grand Champion cockpit um, cabinet in. So anyway, so the door had come off while she wasn't here. <laughs> so <laughs> dismantling the house is never a good idea, guys, um, when the other half is, is at home. So anyway, uh, I got the door off and, the, and my boys helped me get the machine in and they were worried and then we got it all positioned up put the door back on it was all sweet and uh, yeah and long story short <laughs> it's, it's been in here now for a fair few weeks actually but she's been subtly reminding me um, that thing's not staying in there <laughs> so, like, mm. so but listen the, the real the honest to god truth is that I are, I am planning and getting this into the theatre I do have a plan for it but there is still a few things I've got to do to move around, and I still want to do an update of the theatre first before I sort of make some, you know, not major changes, but quite a few changes in there. I thought now it's about the time. I've got all the games in from, you know, the last, you know, just over a year. I want to do an update, um, and let's just do it how it is right at this moment. Um, not in the next video, probably the one after, but coming up. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So anyway, the soundboard, what happened there? Wow, jeez. So yeah, I got one soundboard out of three. Can't believe that. I, um, I got hold of the eBay seller and listen, this guy was straight away, was straight back to me, great communication. He was like, what's happened? How was it packed? I said, you know, it was literally just as you saw, it was just in the paper. It wasn't even wrapped in bubble wrap and it was only the one and not the three. And he came back and he said, oh, he had some new guy that had started with him and it was probably, um, probably the guy's fault, you know, he just started and didn't really know what he's doing. That was, that's what the guy told me anyway. And so um, I thought, well, okay, well, that's cool, but um, what, are we, what are we gonna do? I only have one board and it doesn't work. So anyway, he actually refunded me straight away, guys. He actually refunded me for the, for the board. He said, don't worry, refund, and I will sort you out um, with those other two boards. So I thought, great. Uh, well, I think great, great, but I thought, well, that's a good outcome considering. And I also asked him about the moon pie, by the way. He says he puts that in every single order. <laughs> what a cool thing to do. Uh, but then things get a little bit strange. Well, first of all, when I, I, I thought, well, what am I going to do now? I've got the money back for, the, for, for one of the boards, but it's broken. So I thought, well, if I take it to Joe Mac and he can fix it, and I have to pay Joe Mac the money that I've sort of been refunded, then I'm basically sort of back to square one, and hopefully with a working board. So I thought, well, I don't really have much other choice. I don't have any other board. So I ended up taking that um, soundboard to Joey. And before I did that, guys, I actually had a bit of a scan over it, just to have a look, see if there was anything obvious. And I did actually find that on the back of the power connector, uh, there was two pins actually soldered together and I checked it on my other two boards, the ones that are basically got too much rust to be saved, 
and I saw on those ones that those pins weren't soldered together. So um, I thought, what the hell's going on here? There was a lot of sort of scratching, and you know, there was just seemed like there'd been some work done in that area, and it didn't didn't look right. So anyway, I showed Joey that, and he you know he looked at it, and he thought the rest of the board looked pretty good. So he um, he ended up taking away, and, and he ended up fixing it. Now he he you know I, the the balance was I ended up I ended up paying a little bit more for the repair than I paid for the board originally in terms of the refund. So I ended up paying up a little bit more, but regardless, it <laughs> was minor. And the bottom line is I ended up with a working soundboard. So I was really, really pleased about that. Something funny though, guys, is that I, I, had it, I had it in here and I was playing away. And then after a while, I'd lose like the left-hand channel. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? And, um, and, and it seemed like it would be just after a small period of time. Like you'd, you'd run it up and play it and it'd be fine in stereo. And then, you know, after sort of five minutes, I'd, I'd lose the, the, the left channel and I'd be like, what, what's causing it? I was thinking, oh no, you know, something's you know, heating up and, and you know, failing on the board and I was starting to really get concerned. In the end, guys, I found out that it was just the RCA connector had actually just popped off and was just sitting there. Now, I don't know why it was like, would work for the first sort of five minutes and then stop, but literally I just pushed the thing back in and it was all sweet. So it just goes to show sometimes, you know, those, those problems where people say, ah, oh, it's just a cable, just a plug or whatever. Well, sometimes it may very well be that. So always look for those low tech solutions when you think you've got maybe a very difficult problem. The other thing that I did, and this caught, caught me out actually, these Daytona machines are very susceptible to getting five volts. You've got to have five volts. Um, bang on otherwise it does all sorts of weird wonderful things and I remember checking the voltage when I had it all apart inside here I want to sort of recheck everything and I thought the voltage was a bit high and you have to run these quite high you know over five volts uh, from the power supply itself so it's got so much power boards and cables tra to traverse to maintain that five volts in the places that it needs you have to actually juice it up a little bit but when I checked it, it was, it seemed to be too high. I thought it was a bit too high. So I actually started adjusting it back and turning it on. And then I got to a point where it started failing. And so I turned it back up a little bit from that. And it was, it was good. And I sort of forgot about it. And it wasn't until I'd been playing, you know, played it a few times a few days later that I'd be playing along. And, and in fact, it was really bizarre because, and it's, so guys, if you get this sort of um, problem, then this is, this is the solution, because it's a rather odd one. It, everything seemed fine like this, like you get the whole um, demo screen and everything. And as soon as you, you, you know, choose your, um, uh, your, your, uh, your race, your, your car and automatic and, you know, once you start the race, as soon as you start the race, all the background, uh, 3D graphics, sorry, all the 3D graphics would disappear in terms of the background. You just have the 2D landscape sitting behind and your car still operates. You just lose the road, you lose all the other 3D graphics. <laughs> and it's really bizarre because it happens only when you actually start the race. And guys, when that happened to me, I thought, oh no, now the main board's like starting to fail. <laughs> and this is the problem, you know, because these boards, you know, can be really difficult to keep running. So the first thing that you think of is always the worst. And uh, and of course, it dawned on me after a while. I thought, oh, I wonder, I wonder if it was because I turned that voltage down, or maybe just turned it down just a tad too much. And I don't know why it lasted. You know, for several sessions and a few days before then the, that problem started to show. Sure enough, I just juiced it up just that little bit more and now it's rock solid again. <laughs> so it just goes to show. So these are pretty temperamental guys in terms of that voltage, got to get it right. But I'm so happy now, this is almost there. So the last thing to do is of course the Ford force feedback. And I haven't actually spent any more time on that because now I really have been thinking about well, what am I going to do? Now I've got this one in, the whole intention was is to get both of them ready and working and then get them into the theatre. And that means I'd need to do get a few parts and bits and pieces of that other machine. If you follow the episode, you know that it's missing a few things. So I'd have to get that sorted. But what I also thought of was, well, if I got this one in here, that one out there, I could actually dismantle completely and clean it up and paint it and actually, you know, 
not go crazy in terms of you know trying to get it back, restored back to like factory new but you know these things are pretty beaten up and it wouldn't hurt to just get you know get off some of that surface rust and you know get it resprayed black clean it up a bit make it look nice and uh, and I thought if I do that and maybe saw some of the other parts that I need for the other one get that one going then bring it in and when I do bring it in maybe take this one out you know strip this one down do the same thing once both of them are ready get them into the theater and by that time I should have all the other things moved around in there ready to accommodate it so that's the plan now guys <laughs> it's the next big plan and as you can imagine there's a quite a lot of work to be done to get all of that going but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, getting back to the soundboard guy, um, unfortunately, it has been several weeks, he, he started to stop communicating about the other two boards. And, and he originally said, yeah, no worries, I'll send them. Uh, and now I've had got nothing, it hasn't arrived, and he's not responding any further. And you know, and I, I don't know what, <laughs> what's going on, guys, with all this. Like, the last thing with uh, Rich and this old game with the artwork taking forever and, you know, I feel bad, like, you know, you, you sort of email and go, hey, what's going on? You don't want to be, you know, that guy that seems like being really difficult, but I just want the parts that are paid for, <laughs> you know, or just let me know what's going on, that's all. Um, so, yeah, guys, I don't know. I, I may not actually get the other two soundboards after all, so I'll still be short of one soundboard, which is going to be a real shame because I actually thought that I'd get another two and then actually have one, one spare. That was the original plan. But anyway, I shall uh, progress that further and see how far I get with it. In the meantime, of course, um, uh, amongst all the other projects that you know that I've got going, I can at least play some Daytona. So uh, to finish this video off, why don't we hook this up, or get myself in the seat, and uh, let's play some Daytona. Okay, let's go. Well, let's start. Um, well, let's go on beginner. Let's have a race on beginner. And of course, now I can choose manual and, oh, it's so good guys to play this. I just love this shifter. The shifter is so awesome. You've got to start in fourth when you're on beginner, it's a rolling start. And uh, even though I've been playing this, you know, a bit, it's, um, oh crap, <laughs> that was pretty average. Uh, it's still really, really difficult to, to get in first and and I'm not not uh, gonna do Jesus wow okay so that was rubbish so 19 split time is pretty bad you want those around the 17 mark so let me let me get a bit better here before I uh, completely um, embarrass myself which I'm continuing to do <laughs> Still on 19. Wow. I definitely need to warm up here, guys. Not quite in the zone. I can run this um, in high resolution on the PC, right? And it does look cool. It does look really, really nice. But even the low res graphics, it just does not matter when you've just got the controls and you've got the cabinet and you know it's that whole whole experience so you just sort of forget about you're, you're looking through those pixels and uh and you're just focusing on on the game although <laughs> i think a really really bad game here geez okay actually i don't even think am i going to make it i'm not even going to make it am i i'm going that bad Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, guys. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. So I'm on 14 seconds, so I'm not going to make it. Oh, no, I got an extra, didn't I? Yeah, it takes me over to 2022. 20, so I will, I will make it. But uh, 16th position is not not crash hot I'm just not not doing this very well and I'll tell you why actually that brake I normally hit the brake there to get it spinning out and I just noticed that that brake didn't actually get the car sideways I'm wondering if I've actually lost the uh, 
the brake somehow, <laughs> which would just be would just be another thing to to look at. Yeah, I think I have, you know, guys. Am I going to make it? Wow. <laughs> right on zero. <laughs> oh my god. And probably very unlucky, I think, with this break. And we're going to try it again. I'll go into the uh, into the next. Uh, let's just put our PPP in. <laughs> PPP. All right, let's start again. Let's go to advanced. Please choose manual. Go manual. Oh, I wonder if this brake has uh, come off. Definitely didn't seem like it was working. It's really hard to get that off the line without it spinning, you know. You can try and go soft on the on the accelerator, but it just seems really, really sensitive. Almost digital-like, but it's definitely analog. Okay, let's see if I can do a little bit, a little bit better. Oh, maybe the brakes did work actually. Just a figment of my imagination and previously poor driving skills. Hopefully, I'm making up for it a little bit here. Yeah, I think it is. I now don't want to just stick on the brake and find out. I'm in competitive mode. <laughs> I want to play. Wow, that slowed down a bit though. And, you know, I've played this track now enough um, that I'm really, really starting to enjoy it. And, you know, that, again, that's the funny thing. I always used to play the, the beginner one in the arcade because you sort of felt like you had a longer game in, a, in some ways and of course it was sort of easy but great fun when you're challenging someone else but this this track's awesome um, even on your own and of course the expert one is uh, just as cool as well so I'm, I'm getting to like both tracks and uh, you Daytona veterans will be probably looking at my style here and going yeah it's not not particularly good, especially if I didn't even change up to fourth there. But oh well, it's all it's all in the fun, guys. It's all about just having fun. And I've had uh, my daughters play, uh, and and my sons, and um, my youngest daughter. Oh, they play, oh, they all love it actually. My youngest one really really loves it. Her feet still don't quite reach the pedals, uh, so we have to stack up a few cushions behind the chair uh, so she can reach, because these bucket seats, you sort of fall back into them. <laughs> so, not, uh, not friendly for short legs. Whoops, that wasn't the third crash shot. Oh jeez, I was in 11th there too. Okay, where are we? Lap three or four. Should really get into fourth there, get a little bit more speed. We're sliding around. Oh, got a bit of a uh, wheel spinning, changing into fourth. We're on eighth, so we're not going too bad. Running a good race, he said. Not too bad. Six. And fourth. A little bit like that. And. Too late, too late, too late. Whoa. Oh, come on, Greg. Yeah, I'm not going to get there now. Oh, too much. <laughs> too much. Can you believe it? Three, two, one. And got the 10th. Crap. Ah. Oh. But as you can see guys, absolutely loving this. Loving the shifter, smack it around. Wow, it is so awesome. Okay, PPPP, let's finish up. Well, that's it. It was a 
huge fun. Gosh, that first race was uh, atrocious. I'm sorry, that was <laughs> that was a poor display. Made up for it a little bit on the second race, but uh, still lost it at the end there. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm really, really stoked, really happy to have this machine going. Um, force feedback, yeah, I've got to sort that out, but you know what, even without the force feedback, I'm just, I mean, I don't even, I just forget about it even, that it's missing. Um, so when that's back on, it just provides that extra, extra level of, uh, of driving um, fun, really, in terms of just, you just feel it smashing into things and the rumbling and stuff. I'm gonna look forward to that. And of course, uh, tearing down the other one, actually not looking forward to that tearing down all that work, but I will be looking forward to getting the second one going. And finally, the, the mission guys, the day will come, it will come. The day will come where I will have two Daytona machines networked and uh, playing head to head. Anyway, I'm gonna sign off here guys. Um, I uh, still got so much, as you know, on, on my plate. Um, I managed to, to squeeze in to get this, this other video finished this, this week. And um, so I hope you did enjoy this, this particular video. Um, it is still gonna be difficult for me over the, over the coming weeks to get videos out, but I am determined and I managed to do it again tonight for you guys. So hopefully you did enjoy it. Look forward to seeing you uh, next time. And of course, uh, look after yourself and play games and all that good stuff. Please subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you do like the content. And um, we'll see you soon. Ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it! You are amazing! The theater is now closed.